look at the history of cybersecurity, let's go back 20 years. Post 9-11, we were in a crisis. And, you know, cybersecurity funding, um, to the degree that there was significant cybersecurity funding, declined what, like every, uh, every other time during a crisis. But when you look at returns that were generated in the wake of crisis, post 9-11, post 2008, post COVID, those were years that generated uh, the most attractive returns in private equity year on year. And in that post 2008 era, I'll call that the silver age of investing in cybersecurity, kind of had the dawn of cloud computing and the companies that you know today, the iconic businesses that are public, the Octas, the CrowdStrike, the Carbon Blacks, the uh, you know companies that you know were born during that era. I think going forward in this environment over next next 10 years, you know where I'm going. It's the golden age of investing in, in cybersecurity. Yeah, let me give a perspective from the CISO's perspective. Uh, our job keeps getting harder, never changes, keeps getting harder. So in the next years, what we see is more, right? More technology, more technology need. What that gives us is more and more challenges, challenges we haven't addressed yet with, with companies. I won't speak to the investment side, but from the security track, we need more, right? We need to be able to fit the new models. We need to be able to grow. That's not going to go away no matter what the economy does. We're still going to be implementing technology in areas that we haven't done before, and then there are going to be gaps that security is going to need to fill. From a, I'll take it from the seed stage perspective, which is uh, I don't think company formation is slowed down. But it is definitely the case that for companies that as they get to mid stages, they're ready to raise an A or a B or a C, there's more focus on, uh, on fundamentals. There's more focus on uh, the correlation of growth rate and burn rate, the unit economics of how much it costs to acquire a customer and how much that customer is worth. So right now, you've got to build uh, solid foundations, go brick by brick to get product market fit, to get sales repeatability before you start to scale up. The vectors keep coming out. The large platform players have a difficult time keeping up with that. And so this is honestly, this is the R&D function for the, for the entire market. And with that, I mean, you know, at the early stage, you know, not just focus on the profitability, but I mean, it's just the base level, solve client problems, attract new talent, do the basics that are good. And then the valuation stuff typically works itself out. Uh, and, you know, as later stage, you know, the the, uh, the repeatability and the economics kind of do play a more important role. And if you look at it, even statistically, over the past 10 or 15 years, you're looking at a very healthy environment. You're looking at a very healthy industry. And one I don't really spend my nights up concerned about. You know, very optimistic if, uh, you know, you, you have a good solution for your customer and you're very customer focused. Uh, so especially the companies that have been funded or are, are, have a path to funding, I think, have a great opportunity. Thank you.